What's up, internet? I got the YouTube bug, so I want to record something. I haven't prepared much. I just want... I'm just gonna give you all the real deal. And what's more real than the real sounds of human language? I'm determined to start this series again from scratch and actually complete it this time. So, let's start with the nasals. Nasal sounds are articulated. You see, when you uh, when when an oral sound is produced, like a non-nasal vowel, like the vowel in the word father, ah. What happens is you not only use your jaw, your lips, and your tongue to, and of course, air pushing out from the lungs to articulate the vowel. You, but also a little something called the velum lifts up and closes off the closest off the track connecting your nose to your mouth and your throat so that no air can escape your mouth so, excuse me so that no air can escape through your nose and all the air is coming out through your mouth when you articulate a nasal vowel like for example in French I don't have an example where because I don't speak French but I know for a fact that the French has an Ah, uh, which is nasal, so it would be something like ah. Uh. What you're doing is you're articulating the vowel normally, but you're lowering that velum in uh, the back of your throat so that air can escape through the mouth and the nose simultaneously. Now, when you articulate a nasal consonant, what you're doing is that with your uh, with some part of your vocal tract. What you're doing is that you're interrupting the flow of air so that the air effectively cannot escape through the mouth and you're also lowering the velum so that all the air escapes through the nose. This is why nasal sounds sound weird when you have a cold because the air coming out of your nose is meeting some kind of obstruction caused by, for example, the common cold. And that's why when you have a cold, you kind of sound weird like this. So, I'm going to give you all the na the nasal sounds found in the International Phonetic Alphabet. Basically, all the nasal sounds judged uh, possible anatomically. And I'm going to give you examples were possible with English and were not possible with a sound from with a word from another language provided that I know uh, provided that provided that I know a language with this sound otherwise I'll just give you the sound so going from the outside in I'm going to start with a bilabial sound the bilabial nasal is found in the English mime then we have the labiodental nasal the labiodental nasal goes like mm. it's found in the English emphasis and also um, it it becomes the the mm sound becomes mm when followed by another labiodental consonant that is or mm. so for example emphasis and I can't think of anything with a V but I can think of for example the word environment in which quote unquote an N uh, precedes the the V but I'm sure you've heard somebody somewhere a native speaker pronounce environment like environment so I'm going to count that as an example if I can think of another word later, I'll pronounce it. Um, okay, a dental nasal. Dental nasal sounds like mm, and is found in the word anthem. Uh, an alveolar nasal mm, is found in the word nine or um, indigenous. A post-alveolar nasal mm, is found in the word enshrine. 
A retroflex nasal sounds like n and is not found in English unless speaking with an Indian accent. My apologies to all Indians <laughs> for that. Uh, there are many retroflex uh, consonants in Indian languages, which is why uh, many speakers of, of English from India substitute some of the alveolar consonants like the n mm and the t and the d <coughs> by the retroflex equivalents like n t d features found in Indian accents. The palatal <clears throat> now before the palatal nasal, let's do an al a, a, an alveolar nasal with <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> bit of a cold there um, allergies you know tis the season um, <clears throat> so an alveolar uh, you ha you can have an alveolar nasal with secondary artic secondary palatalization, uh, which would sound something like ni, and is found, for example, in the word onion, and uh, is also found in Spanish. Now, you then you would have like a bona fide palatal nasal, which I haven't heard in English, but you can, but it sounds like ni, and you can find it in the Italian, for example, gnocchi which is the word of course for you know the pasta dude um, then we have a velar nasal which is found in, which sounds like mm, and is found word finally in English in words like king or sing or in one of the two possible pronunciations of words like walking and talking, the other being an alveolar nasal, walking, talking, working. And uh, it can also be found in the middle of a word like like uh, singer. And it can also be found before other uh, velar sounds like k or g, like in nk or finger. Finally, the uvular nasal, not found in English or in any other language that I speak, but which is done, as you might, as, as the name suggests, on the uvular point of articulation. So it would sound something like, um. So, front to back, let's go again. Bilabial nasal, mm. labiodental nasal, mm. dental nasal. Mm, alveolar nasal, mm, post alveolar, mm, retroflex, mm, um, alveolo palatal, uh, alveolar with palatal with secondary palatal palatalization, mm, mm, palatal, mm, velar, mm, uvular. Oh. There you go. Those are all the nasals that I can think of, and those are the nasals found in the International Phonetic Alphabet. Next stop, the plosives. I'll see you guys then. I hope you've enjoyed this very, very nasal video.